Hello guys, uh, in this video I would like to explain about uh, the calculation of uh, um, uh, standardized precipitation air transpiration index which we called uh, simply SPEI SPI uh, um, yeah, drought index. So in the previous video I have discussed about the theory, the concept, the, um, the understanding and you know the standardization standardization of this drought index in detail so if you have missed that video the link to that video is given in the description of this video just go and click and just uh, learn about the theory the concepts the calculation and i mean theoretical calculation what is the theory behind this drought index and what are the advantages of this drought index uh, uh, as compared to SPEI drought index. So if you know that, then you can explain, you can interpret your result. If you don't know the theory, then maybe you can get the output in R, but maybe it can be difficult for you to explain, to interpret your result properly. So in this, that's important to know the theory before uh, the practical uh, application of this drought index of any method uh, in R and R studio. So for solid and, and precise interpretation, you need to know the theory behind that method which you are applying in R and R Studio and, or in Python and or any other software. So usually I'm doing like this. I do the theory first and then the applications. So this video is about the calculation of SPI in R and R Studio. And uh, you can see in the center, this is this is my own plot in the center part, you know, the blue lines and the, um, how to say, the red lines, yes. You can, you can write, uh, you can draw a threshold value where you are identifying droughts. We will do that in the next video. So let's do how we can calculate this drought index in R. Uh, this code is available uh, online and the link is given in the description of this video so just go and click uh, there is as you know there will be a text link to the video link to the r code used in this video just click on that link and you will be directed to this code you can just download this code and use on your own data i am using generated data simulated data but you can use your own data Okay, uh, there are some steps. There are six steps in this calculation which we will follow. Yeah, the last step is, uh, of course, yeah, to plot it or to save the, the plot of this drought index. So you need to use these, um, load these libraries if you installed already. If you don't, if you did not install these libraries, you need to install these libraries first by using install dot packages and then brackets these names with the double commas so i have already installed so i'm just calling these libraries spi ggplot2 and deploy okay now i'm generating this these two data sets one is for and remember that if you know the theory then you need it why i'm generating these two data sets because spei standardize Precipitation, evapotranspiration, and we denote evapotranspiration, evapotranspiration by PET. So SPEI mean uh, standardized precipitation or transpiration index. So we need two data set in this case. In this case, in your case, if you have the real world data, you are not using simulated data. You you have the precipitation data. Okay, that is fine. You don't need to do anything with that. But if you have temperature data, you need to estimate PET by using Thorn White or any other formula. So I will have a separate video on, the, on those methods. So then you will see which method you can use. Uh, any one of those methods, if you think that's better for you, you need to estimate PET from temperature data. So I am simulating these two data sets. That is precipitation, then is just simulated data part PET. And remember that from the theory previous from the previous video, you can see this is water balance. That is precipitation minus PET. So I have done this. Now this is converted to a time series. 
or the th third step that was the second the first step was loading the package the second step was uh, to generate the data simulate the data and third step is convert uh, to t is object time series object monthly data starting january 1 2000 so you can just imagine you can your data can be have your data can have their the dates of their data but this is generated data so let's do this and you can check these data set you know if you want to see now i'm just creating the object to calculate three month spi that's not necessary you can calculate one month we just need to write for scale one month anyway i'm doing this now for three months at the moment so this is now object underscore uh, spei underscore object so that is now saved in this one the spei function is used to calculate uh, the drought index for three month time scale now convert to the data frame for ggplot to yeah that's very important you need to convert this to data frame if you want to use ggplot to to plot this drought index if you are using any other method you don't need to do this step number five remember Okay, so that was step number five. This is step number six. Just remember that is a mistake and dimension five. Okay, now um, add wet and dry classification. So that is now this is uh, I'm just saving the data that SPI deep and this is the pipeline command and then mutate type F yields spy is greater than or equal to zero. That can be wet otherwise it can be dry so just use this command so then you are adding wet and dry it is and now the last step that's the seventh step you can plot this data just look at this i'm saving this in p you can use directly to plot this but i'm saving this in p because i need to save this image and that's why i'm using p here that's why i'm i'm i'm, I'm uh saving the output of this ggplot command np just do this i would like to delete this first and then i will plot again okay so now you can see now just mention p here or here because i am i've saved in the p now the, you will see this is now look at this so this is now the plot for your data Okay, and now the final step is to save this plot. Remember that this is the special command for gg save. So gg save, and this is now the name of the plot. You will see I have this plot already in my directory, so I will just remove this. Uh, this one, I think that is this one. Yes, that is this one. So I'm just removing this, and you can save uh, again. Uh, that's you will see how. Okay, this is now the plot SPEI underscore plot underscore 500 DPI. Remember that 500 DPI, that's uh, 300 DPI standard. I mean, that's the standard plots with the 300 DPI and 500 is more with the more high resolution. So you can use, you can save this plot with such type of DPI so that you can use these graphs in the publications like the articles, maybe research thesis and your technical report and so this is the name of the title and you will see this title with this extension tape you can use png you can use other format as well plot that is p which i have saved here so that this plot p will be saved with this name in the current working directory which i am working dpi 500 width at height 4 and you know the inches and background is white just click this and you will see okay i have saved this and now i saw this plot with the tiff format you can use yes the png is also saved this is png this is step you can click on this and you will see how it looks like yes nice plot not, not that one okay um okay i'm going to close this okay uh so you can save plot and okay here 
because I'm I'm currently working here, so it is my current working directory. You do need to set uh, to set the path. Uh, remember that you can use you can calculate this route index at any other time scale. That was for three months. You can use this for one month. Just do this. Repeat all these steps, and you will see now a different. Remember that you need to change the you know, like. The title because you don't need to write a three month this now you can write one month just do this and now you can write p and you will see yeah that's now different because this is now for monthly data so each month separately not for three months uh, remember that you can do this for more i suppose i'm writing this candy for six months and do all the steps together not separately like until here and then write p just look at this now different six months together together and together so yeah that's for six months now yes okay so okay i think uh, now you know that how you can use how you can use uh, R and R Studio to calculate SPEI round index, uh, you know, from your data. This is from synthetic data, from generated data. Uh, perhaps I will do this for uh, my own data, and then you will see how to do this with your own data. Uh, in the next videos, we will try to plot different threshold lines because uh, with different region uh, people use different threshold and they say that from this below this threshold there are droughts and like you know the most common value is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.85 so this will be something uh if i plot this again and just uh, open this plot so this means that uh this line i know if i if i'm taking 0 0.85 it can be somewhere here 0 0.85 and then that mean that below that threshold there are route events and you can see a lot of events you can see here okay so uh, i think uh, this is enough for today and see you in the next video ciao